In this video, we're going to talk about some more terminology as it relates to graphs. So obviously we covered a little bit in the last video, but this will be just a little bit more because graphs are probably new to you. It's it's actually a very large branch of mathematics and to me a very interesting one, uh, but this just serves as a great introduction in this course. So we're going to start by looking at some terminology that you need to understand, and this is specific to undirected graphs. We'll look at directed graphs in a few moments. And the first is adjacent vertices, also called neighbors. And this one's kind of a gimme. Adjacent vertices are vertices that are connected by an edge. So A and B would be adjacent or would be neighbors, but B and C would not because B and C are not directly connected by an edge. Incident would be what we would call an edge. So we would say, uh, let me just give this edge a name B. So I would say edge B is incident with vertices E and B. So incident just means it's the edge that, that is connecting two vertices. If we talk about the neighborhood, and you see in my next line, this is actually the notation that I would use for a neighborhood. A neighborhood is essentially just a set of all of the vertices, which of course would be a subset of the vertices of the graph, um, that are connected to a specific vertice. So if I wanted to know the neighborhood of, say, E, it would be the union of all of the vertices that belong to the set that are neighbors. So that would be A and B and C. So obviously um, D would not be included because D is not connected to E. That brings us to degree. The degree for an undirected graph is essentially the sum of the number of ins and outs. So uh, the number of vertices connected to that particular vertice. So the number of edges connected to the vertice. So for A, Notice we'd have one, two, three, four. So the degree of A would be four. So even though that loop is just really a line connecting itself, we do have to count it twice. For B, we have one, two. So the degree of B equals two. If we're looking at E, the degree of E is three. And then for C, one, two, three, degree of C is three. And then for poor D down here, the degree, whoops, the degree of D is obviously zero. So it is a vertex, but it is not connected and therefore it has a degree of zero because there are zero edges coming out of it. We would call D isolated because obviously it's not connected to anything else. Um, the last one is a pendant, and unfortunately I didn't put that on your picture, but a pendant would be something um, that is essentially just connected uh, to one other edge. Let's say I had a square, and then I had a guy sticking out like this. And so the pendant would be this guy because he is out here by himself and it is the vertex that is the pendant. So if this was point E, we'll just call these A, B, C, D. So E would be the pendant because it is the vertex that is connected only once to another vertex. Let's take a look now at the handshaking theorem and you might not see this called the handshaking theorem everywhere, but it is a theorem or a relation that we're going to use um, often in graph theory. So the handshaking theorem essentially initiated with a question like what I have written in green. Suppose there are six people in a room and each must shake hands with every other person. How many handshakes occurred? So without looking at the handshake theorem, let's just look at what the solution is. If I started, um, and again, if I have an edge connecting two vertices, that means they shook hands. So A shook hands with B, that's one. A shook hands with C, that's two. And then with D, that's three, four, five. So then if I look at B, 
Remember B, I don't have to count the one I've already traced over in blue because I've already counted that A shook hands with B. So B shakes hands with C, D, E, F, so that's four. And then I'm going to add an and one more three over here, not an initial three, but three more for C. And again, that doesn't mean C only shakes hands three times. It means I've already counted that he or she shook hands with A and with B. And with D, I only have two more that I haven't counted. And with E, I only have one that I haven't counted. And if I add up five plus four plus three plus two plus one, I get a sum of 15. So what I know is that there are 15 total handshakes. So if they just asked for how many handshakes, I've answered the question, I can be done. But we want to think about this more mathematically than having to count this up every time. So instead, let's think of it this way. And we did a question like this before, so you may be thinking, oh, Professor Brain, you're cheating. You're using an example we've used before, and I totally am. I'm totally doing that. Here's what we said before. We know that A obviously is not going to shake hands with him or herself. That would just be weird. But A has to shake hands with B, C, D, E, and F, so that's five. And B shakes hands with five people, and C shakes hands with five people, and D and E and F. Now, if I add all of those up, I, in fact, get 30. Well, we know our solution is 15. We've already discovered that on our own. And 30 is not the correct answer. But what we talked about before is that if A shakes hands with B, then B is shaking hands with A at the same time. And so essentially what I've done is counted it twice. So what the handshaking theorem says is that for some graph, and remember the terminology there is VE, where V represents the vertices and E represents the edges. And let's just say that this has M edges. Then the handshaking theorem says, if we take two times the number of edges, that is going to equal the sum of the degrees of all of the vertices. So does that say exactly what I said before? Well, let's look at it this way. We already know that the sum of the degrees of all of the vertices for this picture over here is five times six because there are six vertices and the degree of each is five. One, two, three, four, five edges coming out of it. So that's 30. This is saying that is equal to 2m where m is the number of edges and 2m obviously would give me that m is 15, and that was my solution. So essentially, it's just an easier way to go about finding the solution. Um, same thing now if I gave you another question. Instead of having to draw the graph and count things up, we can just use this relationship. How many edges are there if you have 10 vertices, each of degree 6? So again, I have to think about what do I know? I have 10 vertices each of degree six. So over here, I had six vertices, each of degree five, and that gave me that 30. So that's all I'm going to do. 10 times six is 60. How many edges must I have? I must have 30 edges. Let's talk about the terminology now related to directed graphs. So directed graph is just another kind of graph, again, where the edges are connected. So we still just have vertices as we normally would, vertices obviously the plural of vertex. But now we've got some additional terminology because we care about the order. So if I'm looking at this guy, obviously, whoops, I went the wrong direction, A maps to A. So A comma A would be some value. And A does map to B, but if you'll notice, and again that's because the arrow went from A to B, but there is no value from B back to A. So the order does make a difference. So keeping that in mind, let's talk about some of the terminology. And I'm not going to continue to list everything out, um, but let's talk about uh, what the terminology is for these specific graphs. So before we just said adjacent to, meaning that they were connected with an edge. And now we're saying, yes, you can have adjacent to and adjacent from. So we're going to look at some examples specifically using this ordered pair, A comma B. 
if we were using the term adjacent to, we would say A is adjacent to B, but B is adjacent from A. So the initial vertex is that first vertex, but the terminal or end vertex is the second vertex. So again, it's pretty easy uh, terminology so far. And now let's talk about in degree and out degree. So if we're talking about the in degree of a vertex, the in degree, and again, notice the notation, the in degree is essentially all of the, or adding up the sum of the degrees of vertices going into that point. So let's take a look at B, just because we're picking on B today. So if I looked at uh, the degree of in, or the in degree of B, I'm saying how many edges go in to B. So I've got one, two, again, because these are arrows in. So the in degree of B is two. What is the out degree of B? It's how many are coming out of B, which is just one. So again, that is the out degree, and we're just using the plus instead of the minus. So the very last relationship is very key. It's one of those things we're going to use not only in this class, but if you continue on to discrete math two or combinatorics where you learn more about graphs and trees and all of those fun things, you're going to use this relationship. This relationship helps us to know, essentially you're going to get a question like, if the number of edges is this, what's the sum of the in degree, out degree, etc. So let's talk about the relationship. This relationship says the sum of all of the in degrees is equal to the sum of all of the out degrees, which is equal to the number of edges. So of course that just means it's the cardinality of the set of all edges, which is the number of edges. So we could go through and we could count that up for A, B, C, D, and E. And we could verify that that's in fact true for this graph, but let's not do it that way. Let's think about it logically. Let's say I'm going to add this guy right here, going from B to C. So if I were to add that, then I'm going to add an edge. And that's going to add one to the end degree right here. And it's going to add one to the out degree right here. So it makes sense that every time I add an edge, I'm adding both an in degree and an out degree. And that's all that relationship is saying. Up next, we're going to take a look at some special types of graphs, like complete graphs or bipartite graphs.